year, we will continue to work with our parents and multiple subcommittees to adapt to this rapid changing circumstances. Um, I will go over the housekeeping of uh, tonight's meeting and will then introduce you to our team. Uh, when you submit your question or when you have a question, please try to raise your hand. Uh, somebody will unmute you to come on. Make sure you have your video turned on because we like to engage, we like to connect with you. And by looking at your face, um, don't hide that shiny face of yours. We'd like to know who we're talking to. Um, and if one person speaking, uh, and if we missed to unmute or mute another one, please try not to talk over the, the first person because it is very hard for us to hear uh, both talking at the same time. I will have Vice President Norwood help monitor the chat box and answer as many questions as possible. Uh, if we missed any questions, we would try to catch that up when Superintendent Jordan finished with her presentation and also Assistant Superintendent uh, of uh, Learning and Development finished hers. So for now, I would like to introduce to all of you our Vice President, Chris Norwood. Chris? Thank you, Han. Good, good evening, parents in Melpitas community. Thank you for taking the time on this Thursday evening to the, to the second of our elementary school um, discussions about the 2020-21 school year under COVID-19. As President Han Lien mentioned, uh, our safe, the safety and security of our educators, our staff, our parents, and our, and our students are paramount. And the purpose of tonight is to give you the opportunity to hear uh, the questions that have been submitted by everyone and for us to hopefully answer them clearly and, and concisely. Our mission is learning continuity. As you know, when the governor and the county declared uh, shelter in place, we immediately launched Educate Everywhere on three days after. From that experience, we learned a tremendous amount about online learning and teaching and the multiple, and the multiple methods that our children like to learn. What we also learned was that we did not have sufficient time to train or support the parents in that process. And they've done an incredible job getting us this far in partnership. We look forward to improving that partnership in the 2020-2021 school year in a number of different ways, including these types of group sessions regarding the future of how education is gonna move forward in the Peters Unified School District. Again, our purpose is learning continuity on behalf of your children so that they are prepared for the future as best as possible in the Peters Unified School District. Thank you again for being here. And with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent Jordan. Thank you, President and Vice President. I would, uh, I look forward to talking with all of you tonight. On Tuesday night, we had about 376 people. I see tonight we're up to 232. And that is something I'm very proud of. Our first strategic goal is to build a culture of we. And I believe and am proud of the fact that everything we've done since March 13th and launching into uh, working to keep everybody safe while also ensuring continuity of learning has truly been an effort of a culture of we. And part of that culture of we as Vice President alluded to is learning from our uh, team members experience and what worked and what didn't, learning from our students about what worked and what didn't, and also especially hearing very loudly from our parents and guardians what they needed so that they could uh, feel supportive and feel that they knew what they were doing in support of their child at home. It is definitely quite evident 
in this day and time that you, our parents and guardians, are truly the first teacher of your child and you are an essential partner in this work with us. Because without you at home during this time when distance learning is definitely some part of how we do education, you are essential partners with us. So we've learned that when we begin school, we need to make sure that you are supported. And we've done that in a number of ways uh, thus far, such as meetings with, such as this, as well as having parents begin to build networks. I noticed in the chat, a couple parents have asked about uh, creating social bubbles. That's one way to support each other. And I wanna go on to say that we've uh, sent a number of surveys out, including a large community survey and we've had over 6,000 responses in the aggregate of all of those surveys. And those two provided information that helps us in our planning for opening and phasing in 2021. Another piece of information that I would like to point out, because I'm sure you're hearing uh, from other school districts nearby in Santa Clara County, that they are beginning to post their details of their plans. And I want you to know that we could easily post something as well. However, it may not take into account what everybody's ideas, concerns, and needs are, which is why we're going to be a little uh, more thoughtful before we post all of the details of our planning, which is the result of over 200 people, some of you included, some of our students included, planning in various subcommittees the details of how we open 2021. So with that, I want to begin and uh, just remind you that if you don't have a question answered tonight and you don't see it answered in the chat which uh, Vice President Norwood and Assistant Superintendent Norma Rodriguez are monitoring and responding to. You can come to our website musd.org and go to the superintendent's page and you'll see inquiries for the office of the superintendent and you could submit your questions there. Also, I'd like to point out that for those of you who have students in TK and K, we have a special meeting coming up for you August 4th. And if you haven't received information for that already in the mail, please let us know and you can also check our website for details. Additionally, uh, we found on Tuesday that how to register for 100% distance learning was definitely a very uh, high level question that many, many people continued to answer. So before we launch into the rest of the questions, I wanna ask uh, Super Assistant Superintendent Norma Rodriguez to just take a moment to take us to the um, musd.org, go to the link under quick links. So I can go ahead and click on it, uh, Assistant Superintendent Norma, if you would just guide us through what we're looking at. Sure. Thank you, Superintendent Jordan. Um, one of the things that we learned from yesterday, and good afternoon, everyone. One of the things that we learned yesterday from uh, the, um, the town hall was that our parents, the new parents, um, to our well, to our district, they are having difficulty getting the code, and so we would like to make it easier for all of our parents, our new parents. You just go to the website, on the main page, and um, Superintendent Jordan probably will be easier if I'm in the in the driving okay. side. You can go to the um, enrollment page from the website. And right in the enrollment page, in front of you, you would go to, um, there we go, thank you. 
And that is where you will get the form. You download the form, click the form. You download the form and it's a fillable form. Once completed, please email it to the person on the bottom. You see the person that is need to be emailed to. And that's all you need to do so that we can minimize the angst of you not getting the code and you not having um, access to the portal. And I need to explain the reason why you're having difficulty accessing the ARIES portal. It's because the current academic year 1920 is still on session. We have summer school. Summer school will not end until next Thursday. And then we have a couple of weeks for us, one week to roll over to the new academic year. All of the parents that are new to our district, um, there have been pre-enroll. That's when they will be activated and then they will get the quote ID. So that's where you're having such a difficult time. This Thank will, you very, oh, go ahead. This hopefully will minimize um, all of the angst and you will be able to enroll. And C si es en español. Sí, si, claro que sí. Si. Para todos nuestros padres de familia que han tenido dificultad en uh, registrarse en el um, 100% de distancia, ustedes nada más van a la página web que está en el Distrito Escolar Unificado y uh, van a donde dice en um, registración, enrollment, y el uh, menú es donde los va a llevar a ustedes a esta forma que la superintendente enseñó para que ustedes llenen esa forma y la, la puedan mandar con nosotros al Departamento de um, Learning and Development. Gracias. And for other languages, if they need assistance, what do parents do? We do have um, the link and our website also. They, um, with tutorials, we have tutorials in Spanish and we have a tutorial in English as well. And our uh, tech department is uh, working on creating all of the FAQ, FAQs that um, have been uh, developed um, from or, or um, generated by our parents. Uh, we're creating short videos with FAQs that are going to be posted on the main page of the enrollment. Okay, thank you. And will those also be in other languages? Absolutely. Great, thank you very much. So hopefully everybody, uh, that is one of the hot questions. Hopefully that's uh, answered some questions for all of you already. And as I go through the presentation, again, if you have additional questions or follow-up, please put it in the chat where Vice President Norwood and Assistant Superintendent Rodriguez are um, monitoring that as well. When you signed up, uh, when you registered for this meeting, it asked you to have insert your questions and we had over a thousand respondents, which is fantastic. And what I did is I copied all of those questions and put them in something called a world, word cloud application. And what I like about this application is it helps us to get a visual of what some of the frequent thoughts or words were. So you can see that what came up a lot is kids, distance learning, and students, and hybrid. And students and learning were the biggest. And that's exactly as it should be because we are about learning and students. You see also other words in here such as ensure, a place, uh, virtual, challenging, change, options, hybrid, planning, teachers, social, safety, models, distance, those words are in there as well. Now these questions are uh, the common questions that emerged from all of those that you entered and from what we heard on Tuesday. And we've grouped them by type of question. So first we're going to talk about safety. Top on everybody's list is safety. 
because if we uh, don't have safety protocols in place, we can't ensure the health of our team members and the health of our students. And it's very important that both have a sense of security for optimum learning. So the safety protocols that we have in, that we will be having in place. We have a subcommittee called the Systems Subcommittee and it's made up of team members as well as parents. And the safety protocols that we will have are signage with directional signs for foot traffic. This helps to eliminate uh, students clustering together and helps to facilitate social distancing. We will also have frequent hand washing and hand sanitizer in place. We have uh, hand washing stations that will be stationed in areas of campuses where they aren't close to bathrooms. We have sneeze guards that we are putting up in all of our offices. And for those classrooms where we have our students with high, high needs, uh, special ed needs, where it's a little more difficult for them to understand social distancing, and in several cases, even difficult for them to wear a facial covering, we will have sneeze guards there as well. And we are also looking at these portable sneeze guards that are for individuals. They're kind of like a trifold that comes around like this. And it's something that for younger students would remain on their desk or their uh, tabletop. And for older students who go from one class to the other, such as at the high school, they would fold it up, take it with them, and then they put it down on their next class desk. Additionally, we will have uh, check-ins on symptoms every day in the morning as people arrive, both employees as well as students, following the public health department's requirements for symptoms checks. And if somebody during the school day ends up having a illness of any type, just as we would in any other day, that student uh, would go to the office and would be sent home. We have PPE in place where everybody will be required to wear a facial mask unless there is some medical reason or a special needs reason that they can't wear it. And for our youngest children, uh, we understand that it's difficult for them to keep a facial covering on. And just as it's important for them to wear seatbelts, it's important for us to help them learn how to have facial masks. So for those of you at home with little ones, there are two things you can start doing right now to prepare your children for the time when we can have in-person learning. Number one, teach them how to wash their hands for 20 seconds. And also teach them to start putting on their facial coverings and to get used to wearing that. I know that the um, public health says that students who are under 12 years old don't necessarily have to wear the facial coverings if they're in a what's called a stable cohort of students in the classroom. Mm -hmm. However, we are about teaching and learning and learning how to wear a facial covering for your own protection as well as the protection of others is a necessity and so that's why we're going to require it for all of our students and teachers. Uh, Temperatures is something now that the public health department and the CDE is saying is not something that uh, they are recommending for schools for a couple reasons. Number one, thermometers are not always accurate. Number two, the um, social distancing becomes an issue because you have all of these students in line waiting to be uh, tested with a thermometer and also they start to kind of do a log jam. So the public health department is not recommending that we do thermometer checks, just symptoms checks. What will happen if our children are exposed to COVID-19 by someone at school? In much the same way as students now who might be exposed to contagious diseases such as chicken pox or um, the novo virus, a notice that is generated by the public health department 
will go home. And all of those students who were around as well as adults who are around the person with COVID will be notified so that they can be tested and they will be required to quarantine for 14 days. Currently, what the public health department is, uh, has given us for scenarios such as these is that if we have a case that's in an elementary classroom, because elementary students are supposed to stay with one cohort of uh, classmates and adults, the county health is at this point in time stating that we would quarantine all of those in that classroom for 14 days. And it's a little vague on what would happen in the classrooms for middle and high school where kids travel from one school, uh, one classroom to another. And so I suspect that once that gets a little more refined <clears throat> in conjunction with the public health department when we have those cases, which we do have to report to them, they will uh, consult with us and I am betting that we will most likely have to quarantine the school or at least the wing where uh, the person with COVID was for 14 days. Registration and enrollment. How do we register for MUSD Educate Everywhere 100% distance learning? Uh, Ms. Rodriguez showed us how to do that on the front page of the webpage. If we choose to have our children participate in 100% Educate Everywhere distance learning for the year, will they lose their spots at their home school? This is the million dollar question that so many people continue to ask us. And you'll be glad to know that no, your child does not lose their spot at the home school. The one caveat to that is that if it comes to the end of the first semester and you decide that, uh, well, let me use myself as an example. So my son's name is Eddie. So if I have Eddie in 100% distance learning and in December I say, you know what, uh, Mr. Rojas, that's our principal at Milpitas High School. Eddie is just really not doing well with 100% distance learning. And I want him to come back to school for the uh, in-person because I th really think he needs to get the in-person. There's a chance that given the conditions at that point in time that we may not have staffing to have Eddie back at his home school for the rest of the year. So he'll have to go to either a different set of classes or a different school. That doesn't mean that he's lost his space at that school for 21-22. On the other hand, if there is room and the staffing is available for Eddie to come back to the um, program where we have some in person in December, then he would stay at his home school. So I just need to give you that caveat. What if I want my child to have the MUSD Educate Everywhere with in person instruction two times per week when that becomes possible? What do I do? If you don't want your child to have the 100% distance learning for the year and at least half of the year, then you don't need to do anything. You don't need to fill out a registration form for 100% or any kind of program. You're just automatically going to be considered as a student who's in MUSD Educate Everywhere. And when the time and the conditions are right, uh, teachers will have students in small groups in person. I saw earlier a question in the chat about is it possible for my child to have in person every single day of the week for the whole day? Unless we have some kind of a miracle with a vaccine this year, this school year, I'm going to have to say most likely no. And except for some instances, if you have a child who is, um, has high needs in special education, we are, right now piloting during the extended school year, the possibility of having those students with very uh, intensive needs in school every day. That's only a small group of students. For the majority, 
we unfortunately will not be able to ensure people's safety and have the students in person every single day for the full day. Uh, let's see, the next question. Do I need to enroll each of my children separately in the 100% distance learning if that's what I want, or can I just enroll everybody as a family? The way our uh, system is set up so that we can maintain each child's attendance, their grades, and their records it has to be individual. So while it would be, um, I understand the ease of that, it's not possible in uh, the system, unfortunately. So you do have to register each child separately for 100% distance learning. When will we have confirmation that our children are in the 100% distance learning program and educate everywhere? By the first week of August. Can we choose to go to in-person if we chose 100% distance learning and MUSD educate everywhere later in the year and vice versa? And as I explained, you can, uh, at the end of the first semester, you can say that that's what you want, but Prior to the first semester, no. We will not be able to have somebody in September, or October, or November say they want to go into the in-person or into the 100% distance learning. And let me just back up again and reiterate that uh, going for the first six weeks of uh, school at this point in time, everybody is going to be in 100% distance learning. And for those students, whose parents, or even the children in some cases, because we, I do know there are some of the students who prefer the 100% distance learning and they actually did very well in it. Um, for those who are not in the 100% distance learning and within that first six weeks, if the conditions are safe and if the teacher uh, determines that it's safe at that site, the teacher may have some of the students and parents coming in in person in small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. And then at the six weeks, we'll see what uh, the conditions are and figure out going from there. But um, please do not plan that you will have your child attending school in person as a regular thing for the first six weeks. Okay, when will we know if our children have been overflowed? For those of you particularly at Matos Elementary, uh, where we have a greater number of students enrolling in kindergarten and first grade than we have classrooms at this point in time. What happens is something that we call overflow. And this is, this is a process that is necessitated because back when California State created class size reduction with students uh, 24 to one in a classroom, if we go over that average, then we, as a school district, are penalized uh, with a very costly uh, penalty. So that's why we have this system of overflowing. And what happens is, if there's not room in the classroom, then you're assigned to another school nearby until there's room in the classroom. But always, 99.9% .9 of the time, the following year, you come back to your home school. Now we're down to schedules and attendance. When does school start? I guess I can chime in and answer this question. School starts on August 13, um, but do remember to register by uh, July 25th. That's the deadline. And the next question we have in this group is, when will MUSD Educate Everywhere begin with in-person learning? Well, when the conditions for safety are in place and at the teacher's discretion, uh, students may come, come in for in-person support while they are doing 100% distance learning. Um, but everything is, is going to follow the guidelines of the county public health. Um, so we will update you on those. Thank you. 
Will families be on the same schedule? Uh, Superintendent Jordan had mentioned that we would try to uh, sort these out by last names so that families can have the same schedule. At the same school? At the same school, yes. How many minutes will students be in MUSD Educate Everywhere? Superintendent Jordan. Okay. The state says that uh, we have to maintain the minimum minutes each day for students to be in school. And in school is defined as both instruction as well as the amount of time it takes for a student to do assignments, reading, or research. So for students who are in TK and K, TK is transitional K and kindergarten, they need to be uh, receiving instruction every day, instruction and homework assignments that are equivalent of 180 minutes. For students in first through third grade, they have to have 230 minutes. And for students in fourth through 12th grade, they have to have 240 minutes. And again, that doesn't mean uh, 240 minutes with the teachers giving them instruction the whole time. It's a combination of the teacher's instruction as well as the assignments and reading and research that the students are doing is the equivalent of 240 minutes each day for the upper grades and 180 to 230 minutes for the lower grades. Are you taking any questions at this point of time or should we wait? Uh, President Lian? Why don't we do finish the questions on this list and then we will go through the questions and we will take questions live. Okay. There's only well, a couple more questions. Yeah. Will attendance be taken and educate everywhere? Yes, every day attendance will be taken. And uh, you know from the spring that attendance wasn't something that was being required by the state. And I think the state came to the same conclusion as we did, which is that it's important to have daily attendance. Additionally, that couples with the next group of questions, which is engagement, grading, and progress reporting. And the first question is, what will grading and assessment look like in MUSD Educate Everywhere? We will have grades. Uh, MUSD Educate Everywhere is now version 2.0. And we learned that our students uh, were, were in need of having uh, some sort of connection each day with their teacher. And so every day, the teacher will connect with the student, if not synchronously like we're doing right now, uh, live, then either by the phone or by email or text. But every single day, the teacher needs to make a connection with the student. And grading and assessment will be very similar to what it is now, which is the student uh, doing projects, uh, homework, and in some cases for assessment, uh, the, you know, there's always that question that I heard from parents, which, and as well as from teachers, which is, how do we know that the student is actually doing the quiz or doing the test himself and isn't looking up the answers online or isn't having somebody else do it? Well, there are a couple ways of doing those kinds of assessments and ensuring that it's the student who is uh, sharing what they learned and applying what they learned. One is to do something called uh, authentic assessment where the student actually discusses what he or she learned or demonstrates what he or she learned. Another is to have a video cam of the student doing the assignment uh, as well as um, for very sophisticated upper level things like AP courses, there are AP test um, systems that allow for the test to be done in a way that 
the artificial intelligence is able to tell if the student was not on the computer or looked something else up on the computer. So for those high stakes tests like AP tests, that kind of assessment is in place. How will you know if my child is engaged in doing their assignments? So I alluded to that a little bit. The other way is uh, we discovered this spring that it was difficult for both learners and parents alike to have several different kinds of uh, tech tools. Some had Google Classroom that they were using, some had other ways of providing the homework assignments. So for this year, everybody is going to be doing Google Classroom, except for the lower grades, they'll have Seesaw that they can uh, choose from. And Google Classroom and Seesaw are both ways that the student can upload the work that they've done and the teacher can see the work and also grade the work right, right in there. In some cases, students uh, can get the feedback from their teacher in the form of a recording, which I think is really cool and really helpful to both the learner and the parent and the teacher. And then finally, how often will, how will I as a parent or a guardian know the progress that my student's making? Well, this year, you're going to have access to your student's progress. And the details are being worked out in our subcommittees about what that might uh, look like and how that might be accessed. And uh, the secondary arena, most likely it'll be ARIES because ARIES is something that's accessible to everyone, but you will definitely have a way that you can see the progress of your child's work. What parent guardian supports will be in place for 2021? At the beginning of this uh, presentation, I talked about the importance of you, parent and guardian, as a partner with the teacher in your child's education and the learning experience. Because for MUSD Educate Everywhere, for as long as COVID-19 conditions are such that we have to maintain social distancing, we are going to have components of distance learning. It's just going to be a part of the way we do things. And that means we need to make sure that you parents and guardians have your questions answered and you understand what uh, the expectations as well as how to use these different tools. So we're creating uh, something that Assistant Superintendent Nora Rodriguez could talk about called Parent to Parent. Thank you, Superintendent Jordan. Parent to Parent is a um, kind of a parent university where we want to bring all of our parents together to support one another um, and also to partner with um, our teachers as well. It's kind of an ongoing uh, professional development um, to learn how to partner with our teachers for our student success. And we are launching our parent to parent uh, this TK orientation to explain how we're going to be supporting one another. Thank you. President Lynn, right. that's the end of the presentation. Yes, we are at the end of that presentation. We are going to open up the lines now for live questions. Um, Thank you. Uh, this is Sanjita. I have a child in Kirtner. And uh, when the lockdown started, I first of all, thank you so much for answering. I hear echoes. Regarding the I think there are two people talking. That's um yeah, this is why we said let's try not to have two people talking at one time because we would not understand uh, both. Well, I had waited last whole session to ask my question. I repeated only asked in the chat session and I never got the answer. So I thought this is right. the I time. think we can hear you now. Would you start your question again, please? Yes. So uh, my question is, uh, thank you for uh, clarifying what is expected out of students in terms of attendance and uh, progress reports. 
I am not clear what is expected out of teachers at the minimum. What I hear is just making a contact every day with the student. That can be even an email. Hey, I didn't get your assignment today, right? That is a minimum contact. And what we got for a third grader was only 20 minutes of teacher's time every day. That too, after a month of lockdown, because we made noise. So I want to know what is the minimum expected out of teachers when we are 100% online learning model uh, forced into that. Thank you, Sanjita. Thank you. Uh, what you are pointing out is the frustrations of uh, launching into distance learning with very little preparation. And as Vice President uh, Norwood said at the beginning, we are now, we've had time to prepare. So our Educate Everywhere version 2.0 is definitely much more in depth. You will see much more than 20 minutes of teacher instruction each day. And we are working on the expectations for how much that will be. And we'll have a, a, more of a specific answer for you at the end of all of our subcommittee planning uh, on August 3rd, if you'd like to listen to our special board report at that time. Hi, my name is Arirud and uh, I joined a little bit late, so I don't know whether this question was answered or not, but my question is this, when I registered my kid for distance learning, it was for the 1920 session, not for the upcoming year, next year basically. So is this, uh, I mean, everything is okay. I don't know whether I registered him or her because I have two kids. One is in the high school, second one is in the kindergarten. Whether I registered both of them or just one of them or none of them, what happened? I didn't uh, get any confirmation in the email either. Yes, thank you, Mr. Joshi, Assistant Superintendent. Yes, uh, thank you. So if you completed the form, the form, the reason it says that you, um, shows for this year is because we have not done the rollover, but we are keeping track of that and that will be for next year, academic year. Okay, and I have Planet's iPhone, um, had hands raised. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for giving me opportunity. So I, I, I have a quick question. Uh, we, we are in Mabel Matos and we fall into that overflow pro problem. So now, uh, I didn't get the part where there is a, when they said there is a chance that she might again go to overflow, uh, my daughter, because if we choose hundred percent distance, like there are 24 students and out of 24, 12 opts for in-person and 12 opts for a uh, hybrid model. So if I go back, then there are only 12 students, right? Uh, so why will we have to go to overflow or you're planning to add more children if they, we are asking for uh, say 100% remote. Are you trying to enroll more students now in Mabel Matos? Uh, let me answer that Superintendent Jordan. No, the reason we cannot add more students to Mabel Matos is because we do not know when eventually we're going to return. We want to think that we're eventually going to return 100% uh, face to face. And the reason we're overflowing Matos students is because of facilities. There is no room and also we need to maintain the social distancing. I, I get that, but I'm saying she is already into homeschool now. She was overflowed, but now she's in homeschool. In After first semester, if we try to go from 100% uh, distant to say in person, right? Why will she be uh, go to overflow school? It's just, I just want to make sure that I give you the caveat that there is a chance that she would have to if there was no room at Matos. So uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and I mean, also, also to explain further, even though there's only 12 kids, there's another 12 kids who come on the B day. So as we're talking about a schedule of an A, B day, because the students would be in person uh, twice a week. So uh, when the two days that your child is not at school, somebody else is at school. So we can maintain the social distancing like Assistant Superintendent um, Rodriguez said. So I just want to make sure that I don't give the blanket statement that yes, you will still be able to go back to Matos in January if you decide you don't like the 100% learning on distance learning. 
because there is a chance that some of the teachers from Matos will be doing the 100% distance learning. And so then there wouldn't be a teacher there to take the students in person. So it just depends also on the staffing and the facilities at that point in time. Okay, and last question I have, uh, will the same teachers be doing uh, the in-person as well as the Zoom session? Like two days in-person school and three days is like, they will be Zooming, Zoom with the same teacher yeah. or will it be different teacher? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks and a lot for you. You're welcome. Thank you. Then I have Angela Leon. Angela, would you unmute so that you can ask the question? So I'm just uh, one. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm just wondering how you're um, going. If you're getting a little more flexibility, the parents who are essential workers and are uh, want to do the hybrid model um, in regards to scheduling. Because I know there's a there. If, from my understanding, there's different sessions on when the kids will go and will not go to school. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit more about what you mean by flexible and scheduling? Yeah, I, so, so from my understanding, there's two sessions mm -hmm. for the children of that grade and 12 go on one day, 12 go on the other day. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So in regards to the days, um, I don't know if you, I wasn't clear on the times of days, but um, for, those, for those parents who are working, are we going to have any flexibility on you know, which days we're going to go, or children are going to go. Because, I mean, we have to leave work to bring our children right. back and forth, and not everyone has that flexibility. Right. When you have two full-time working parents who are essential workers. Yes, and that, uh, that would be really awesome if we could work with every single parent to uh, figure out what works best for them. Mm -hmm. And so I know that that's not necessarily possible. So I'm going to say this, which is to the most extent possible between you and the principal, parents and the principals, looking at how we can accommodate the essential workers. I also want to let you know that um, Jerry Lopez, he is our coordinator who oversees uh, early childhood education as well as our child development centers. He's been tasked with figuring out how we can provide uh, childcare for our team members as well as our essential, our parents who are essential workers. So hopefully we also might be able to provide some, ch some of those childcare um, solutions. Thank you, Angela. Uh, Ram? <coughs> Hi. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. I have a couple of questions. One is basically a basic question. Um, we did not know about this session or even the one that happened two days ago. Um, and uh, we continue to check the parent square uh, application where, you know, uh, messages are posted. Um, we did not know about this. So uh, one basic question I have is like, how do we even know about this session so that we don't miss info important information? I right, may I ask you, uh, Ram, how did you find out about this one? We just happened to run into somebody who, you know, who just, we were just talking about like, you know, my daughter's school starting and then said, oh, you know, there is something uh, might be happening, you should check. So we went to this MUSD website and then they said, uh, it is also posted on Facebook and we are not on Facebook, so we don't know about these things. Right. So, um, but we have given our email addresses, our phone numbers to, you know, when the registration happened. So we expected that we would get some emails uh, or even text messages, right? But we haven't gotten anything. Okay. So. Well, I'm sorry that you didn't get the message um, and you are on Parent Square. Would Which you... has no information. I just checked even uh, this morning and yesterday. There was no information on Parent Square. Okay. So... Would you do us a favor and go to the website, um, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, and click on Superintendent's Office and put in your problem on that form there so that we can make sure we take care of you. Okay, sounds good. And uh, what was the second question? Okay, thank you. Enrollment. Yeah, so uh, the, the main, main question we had was uh, uh, basically what is the next step we have to take because we even missed the first 20 minutes of this session. 
So uh, what are we supposed to do? Uh, our daughter is registered. Um, uh, you know, when the when it was like January time, right? When everything was going fine. So what are we supposed to do next? Are you uh, brand new parents for Malpitas Unified? Yeah, this is our first time. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, you will have confirmation confirmation from your school in the next uh, ten days. Mm -hmm. And you said that you already went and you registered and submitted all of the forms that are required to the school secretary? In January, yes. In January. Okay, good. So then you are set and you'll get the official notification along with your ARIES ID in about 10 days. And w would that be via email or USPS mail or, or which way we expect that? Assistant Superintendent. <laughs> the, um, all of our school secretaries, as a matter of fact, we uh, invited them back and early so that um, we can expedite that process. And again, um, that would happen as soon as the rollover is, happens. Um, that's why you're not getting um, the information because you are pre-enroll and your child has not been fully activated until we do the rollover to the next academic year. So you will be receiving an email via Parent Square, letting you know that you are fully enrolled or next steps. And it will be from the principal and the secretary. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Superintendent Jordan. Yeah, this Mitoshi. Norwood. This is Chris Norwood. Um, I've got a question. Can you hear me? Give me one second. Okay. Sure. Yes, Chris. I've got a question about um, the possibility of uh, Educate Everywhere students getting their homeschool teachers. So uh, again, everybody is in Educate Everywhere. And if we're talking about the 100% distance learning, what we are uh, Attempting to do is have the elementary schools clustered uh, in pairs. So, for example, Weller and Pomeroy, so that uh, between those two school communities, the teachers who are doing the 100% distance learning for the year, or at least half of the year, they uh, they will have students from Weller and Pomeroy, and then uh, for those students who are doing the in person a couple days a week they will most likely have their home teacher unless like my hands are there, unless, there aren't, <laughs> unless there aren't enough uh, teachers at one school but there might be a teacher from the other school so we may end up having to have some of the students shared between the two schools we're still working that out, but that is our intention to try and keep the students and the teachers between two buddy schools. Okay, and now uh, I would, sorry, Mitoshi, you can unmute now and ask your question. Okay, um, thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much for having this uh, Q&A session. Um, so my question is, you know, uh, I guess up till a certain age, the kids pretty much need the parents to handhold them through distance learning, which is fine. Um, I guess I'm just wondering, are the teachers going to be required to provide daily lesson plans that, you know, are very detailed about what needs to be done? Um, because, you know, in the past, uh, sending teachers sending parents a bunch of, you know, online links to different tools is not very helpful and stressful for parents who are not teachers, not educators, and not really sure as to what exactly on a daily basis they should be doing with their child at home. I feel you, Mitoshi. Is that how I see your name? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, that goes to a couple of different things. Uh, number one, we want to make sure that you are feeling um, supported so that your frustration level is not, um, is not always bouncing up every day. Also, um, last spring, we literally, it was like jumping out of an airplane with backpacks on and 
uh, parachutes trying to get us through it. We've had a lot of experience now and that yes, there will be expected uh, instruction each day, whether it be virtual or at the time when conditions are safe in person. And it'll definitely be more than what you experienced. So it'll be more expectations, more, it'll be clear. We're trying to streamline the types of tech tools that um, teachers are using so there are many more commonalities and not a lot of different kinds of links that a lot of different people use. I couldn't hear the board president. Ah, President Yen, you're muted. I am so sorry. Okay, Jen. Hi. 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 Um, my question really is about dates. Um, I have two. I have three kids. Two are returning. Uh, one is going back to Rancho, and the other is Senate. Um, the third one is going to be um, starting kinder at Synod. Uh, my question is, um, they, they're all registered. Um, the, the kinder one is already registered for, for, the, for the, the, you know, for his first, first year at kinder. Um, so is there anything we need to do uh, if we are opting for the hybrid learning? No, you don't have to do anything. Only if you want the 100% distance learning for the entire year. So that July 25th is for the 100% distance learning. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I have a second question, really. Um, I'm sure someone already asked this. Uh, is there a way to, say, switch somewhere within the school year, switch to this 100% or, or back, um, or are we set for the entire year? At the semester in December, uh, that's when we'll be uh, open for the possibility of switching from one to the other. In December? Yeah, at the end of the first semester. Okay. Okay, but um, how about if um, the coronavirus situation got worse? And would, it, would the parents that register for a hybrid, can they choose go to distant learning within the, the same semester? If the coronavirus conditions get worse, yes. chances are we will all be still doing distance yes. learning okay. with very little in person. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Anita? Hello? Hi. Hello, can uh, you hear me? Oh, sorry. Yeah, hi. I had a question about the documents we needed to submit. So before we close for the COVID thing in end Feb, I remember the dental uh, verification form I, we were yet to submit. So right now I heard that the August first week is when the new enrollment is going to happen. So do we need to mail the dental verification form to the school before that day so that my daughter can be rolled in? She's like a first time. Hello? Superintendent? Um, so she's the first time enrollee and you want to make sure that the, you have all of your registration forms in. Right, right. And she's a kindergartner? Right, uh -huh. right. So August 4th, right, uh, Assistant Superintendent Rodriguez? August 4th is the day that you're having the kindergarten orientation? Correct, August, August 5th. August 5th, okay, thank you. And could you explain again? Um, so, so, so we were required to submit, right? We well, can submit the medical and dental forms, right? So I remember by in Feb the medical forms were done, but then because of the COVID thing, the dental doctor they closed, and so I remember we have not yet submitted that dental form. Okay, so now you should be able to make an appointment to see your dentist so that you can get the dental form completed. Okay, okay. So unless all the documents are submitted, we can't get the verification code, right? Is that true? 
to this is the superintendent. Um, let me um, allow me to share something on my screen so that I can explain with this flow chart. Um, can you can you see this chart right here? Uh, no, you haven't Not yet. shared yet. Okay. How about now? Yeah, we yeah. can see yes. something now, yeah. Okay. Can you make it larger? Yes, I'm trying to make it larger. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, how about now? Yeah, better, better. Yep, yeah, that's great. So, so if you can see right here, you have done all of the steps. You probably in COVID you called or you took a picture of, the, of all of the documentation right. so that we could enroll. Where we are right now is you're waiting for the school secretaries to come back to call you or email you so that you can bring in the verification documents. Once you bring in all of the verification documents or email them or scan them, any, all of the documents, the medical documents, then your and success, your official enrollment is completed. Okay. We, don't want, we don't want our parents to worry uh, that they will not be able to take a um, chance of enrolling in the 100% distance learning. So do not worry if none of this has taken place, still go ahead and complete that form, that application form, if you want to opt in for the 100% distance learning. Does that make sense? That, that makes sense. So our daughter, since of the hybrid option, we were going, so I guess we won't be filling up that form. And is there the email address also where we should mail the dental form to once we get it from the doctor? We, we would rather e you email the dental forms to the school because uh, the form that you're sending for the hybrid, for the 100% distance learning goes to the district office and we do not have a central enrollment at the district office. Right, right. So if to the Gartner school my daughter is going to, do we, do we have the point of contact there? who I can email the dental form to? Yes, you can email the dental form to the school secretary. If you go to Kerner's uh, website, you will see her name there. Perfect, perfect. Thank yes. you so much. You're welcome. Thank just you. Just, okay, just small, one minute. Just before the classes start, do we have a list of the online materials the kids can uh, look up before the classes start? We, we have not, we have been receiving a lot of emails from our parents who are very, they're wanting to prepare ahead, asking for a list of materials for each of the grade levels. And we're working with the principals to generate that and also in collaboration with the teachers to okay. generate that and post on the school's websites. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And I'm gonna call on Chana. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry, Ajana. I don't know why, but your uh, connection is really bad. The two questions to part one question is uh, what is the duration of school? Uh, uh, um, the first question is what is the duration of the school? Like the what? When does it start and when does it end during the day? That was the first oh, question. The duration. The second of thing school. is, I do know that the uh, based on the each class, uh, there's a minimum number of uh, instruction hours for each kid. Yeah, there's a number minimum number of uh, instruction hours, but it does not tell us. Uh, yeah, the duration of the school every day. Okay. What time it starts and uh, what time it ends. Oh, superintendent. Uh, that is a detail that we will have available on the August. Time of the school day. It makes the sense. Start and, start and end time of the school day will be on August 3rd. All right. Thank you. Um, Haina Patel. Uh, hi, uh, my husband will ask the question about uh, registration. Hi, so basically you go to Aries and confirm everything like contact and everything for registration. Is that it, right? Yes. So by mistake, we selected like we wanted to do hybrid, but we selected 100% person 
in class, how do I change it right now? Like I can't go back to that form now. That that is okay. If you if you please send me an email, Norma Rodriguez, um, and Rodriguez at musd.org, and we will make note of that on our on our um, roster. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, James Lee. Um, I do have a Hi. question. I don't know if it's next. Can you hear me? Um, also, if I could just interrupt, if you go to the bottom of your screen where it says participants, for those of you who don't have it up, and then you look there, you should see your name, and there's a little icon where you can click raise your hand. I'm on the phone. I'm, I'm okay. calling. Okay. Well, then you can't raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> so after James Lee, after James Lee is Dinesh. Um, please get yourself uh, with the questions ready. Okay, James. Okay. Uh, my question okay. is: um, Will this be um, the one hundred percent distant learning? Will that be teach by the teacher? The teacher actually be teaching to the student because the, the parent right doesn't have time to teach them. Like both parents working one hundred percent. You know. And also, you know, for some subjects, right, like my kid is from, you know, kindergarten, right, and English is not my first language, it's really hard for me to teach them phonics and pronunciations, right. I'm wondering how, how is that going to be with 100% distant learning? Yes, you will have your teacher there uh, providing instruction to you, live time, as well as providing uh, other assignments for you to do, uh, for your child to do without the live instruction. Okay. Uh, hi, this is Dinesh. Uh, first, thank you for being so tech savvy and answering all our questions. Um, first question is, uh, is the curriculum same for both hybrid and distance learning? Yes. Yeah, we have uh, common standards, core standards that everybody has to uh, teach and that our students need to learn. Okay, and, and uh, does any uh, signups for Aries Portal or Parent Square or even the Educate Everywhere, do the signups differ for the 100% learning versus the in-person learning? Yes, for the 100% distance learning, you need to do the uh, registration form and it can be found on the front page of our website, right underneath the quick links. Yeah, sorry, not the registration yeah, form, but I, I, no, I'm talking about like Educate Everywhere access and all that, right? The passwords and usernames for the access. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, once uh, we get closer to the start of school, actually when school starts, uh, you'll get all the information from your teacher. Irrespective of which option we choose, right? Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dinesh. Um, Sudi? Hi. Hi. I have a quite I have a few questions um, for the uh, hybrid learning. I want to know. Uh, I believe we're starting out the first week, uh, the first six weeks, for, uh, studies from home, right? And then if we um, choose to do the hybrid learning, um, is it true that we're going to start out with one day at school and see how it goes? If the pandemic continues to improve, and then we go two days maximum, is that correct? Sort of. Uh, for the elementary, uh, the model there that they did is they want to have, so they have an A group and a B group. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I also have a question about that too, Neil. Can you walk me through? Because I tried to watch your video a couple of times. I, I don't seem to comprehend. Is my son going to be group A or B? And there's A1, B1. Uh, and so, and so I, I really cannot comprehend. Can you also elaborate, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, so let's say your son is in the A group and uh, the conditions are such that we can bring uh, groups of students for in-person learning in the class, in-person instruction in the classroom. So the first week or two, the teacher is only going to, she's going to, or he is going to take your son's A group and divide it in half. So let's say your son is in the A1 group and then your son for the first few weeks as they're transitioning into the in-person is going to come to school on Mondays. 
And then after they transition into the first few weeks of school and the conditions are still such that we can continue with the in-person, then the other half of the A group will join them. So then you'll have, he'll have 12 people in his cohort going forward unless conditions change where we have to retract again to everybody in 100%. Does that help? So the, to begin with, he is going to have six mm -hmm. uh, kids in, in the class. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't improve, we'll continue with the one day with the six people. Unless it gets worse, then we retract. We again. pull back. We do 100% learning. Okay. And then, um, so what about uh, lunchtime? I understand you were saying, because there was another um, parent asking about the, uh, the curriculum, the, the schedule of the day, right? Um, I understand you need to uh, work on that and then for the detail. But I just want to know, are, they, are you planning on having the children have lunch at school? Or, you know, in other words, you know, use the, the usual class time starts at 8.45 at Zanker and then um, fourth grader, he will finish at 2.45, is it going to be carried out the same um, same uh, way, even just on Monday? No, we'll have a half day and the students will um, get a back lunch and take it home. Okay, so basically in the morning and then lunchtime you go home, have lunch. So just a couple of hours that we're talking about. And then uh, one to two days maximum throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Unless we have a um, vaccine. Right, right. And then uh, my last question is, um, I'd like to know, do you have any general stats? I don't need specifics, but I, I just want to know if you have any um, sort of, you know, because you we've done quite a bit of, bit of the survey, you know, you hear from us, right? Are you able to share, um, I, I guess, you know, I don't want to say percentage, but, you know, um, share with us the stats, you know, how many parents seem to lean towards to the 100% distance learning versus the hybrid learning, just so we know, because we've talked to you know, our group of friends and stuff, but we don't know what's overall in the district. Sure, That's I can picture that. Yeah. Overall, yeah. it's almost 50-50. Okay. All right then, thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I have an iPhone XNP raised hand. Uh, hi, uh, this is Tina. So uh, I thank you for taking all our questions. Uh, so you mentioned that the uh, more details around the distant learning will be rolled out on August 3rd. But then I believe that my, our deadline to enroll in distant learning is July 25th. So I would like to know more details around how you can carry out the, uh, the you know, uh, classroom. Would it be a teacher-led model for the entire school time and so on? So how do I, I mean, if I, I mean... How do I do that before knowing all the details? What kind of details are you looking for? I'm sorry, what kind of? What kind of details? Yes. Tell me more about the details that you're asking about. Right. So as uh, every parent uh, mentioned that uh, when the when COVID rolled out, I mean, when COVID struck, we had, um, you know, our kids, teachers used to meet with kids once a week for one hour and the kids used to do homework all by themselves. So I want to understand if it is going to be a teacher-led classroom model online where you know the students will have to sit with the teacher from 8 a.m to 2 p.m depending on the grade so would teacher be teaching as if they were teaching in a classroom or would the onus be more on the students and the parents to finish the homework and the teachers meet with the students once or twice a week thanks that we can answer right now okay okay um going back to um the requirements and expectations whether you're doing 100% distance learning or you are doing some of it in person. Every single day, attendance has to be taken. Depending on the grade level of your child, let's say your child is a fifth grader, every single day, your child has to have two, the equivalent of 240 minutes of instruction as well as learning time. So that means a big chunk of that time should be instructional. It could also be uh, doing some group learning. It could also be researching, reading, and also the assignments. And so, yes, it will definitely be daily instruction, daily student contact, and also uh, the teachers are going to have to provide parents with progress reporting. So for the high school, that will most likely be um, 
around using Aries because it's something that's already available. And at the elementary level, it could be Aries, it could be Google Classroom. We had to figure that out. And then finally, every single week, the teacher has to capture documentation that the student was engaged. Those are the four requirements from the state. They also happen to fall in line with our expectations of the district. Okay, great. So uh, just to uh, clarify, you mentioned two 40 minutes per day of uh, teacher-led uh, classroom, right? 240 minutes of the teacher-directed instruction and uh, learning experiences, yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, just a follow-up, sorry. Um, so uh, you mentioned that there is there will be an opportunity to go from 100% distance learning to a hybrid model and back and forth, and we can uh, make that switch around uh, December timeframe, and, and depending on the conditions uh, that exist at that time. Uh, but I just wanted to confirm that the kids will remain in the same school in the same with the same teacher, whether we make a switch or is there a possibility of uh, them not getting uh, uh, the same teacher in same school? Because I think in the beginning you mentioned something about that. I didn't quite catch it. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, the teacher may not be the same because we will have teachers who are assigned to doing the 100% distance learning. And we'll have teachers who are assigned to doing the distance learning with in-person or hybrid. But they're not necessarily the, they won't be the same teacher. But school remain the same, right? They, they won't. The, home school, the students homeschool will always be the homeschool. But the student may, there is a slight chance if you decide to switch in December at the semester, depending on what the staffing availability is, there is a chance that your child uh, would not be for the rest of the year at the homeschool. There might be with the buddy school. Okay. So, I mean, I understand that uh, there is a lot of uncertainty for the parents to decide at this point in time by July 25th to make a determination and then stick to it. So, I think it'll be better for us to have all these answers and then make a determination or have the flexibility to, um, you know, change it without any of these kind of issues happening that we don't get the homeschool. I think that's the point, trying, point my wife was also trying to make that without a lot of with a lot of uncertainty, it's very difficult for our parents to make a determination whether it is 100% uh, distance learning or hybrid model. So, so hopefully yes. that is um, understood by the administration and, and give, will give parents some chance to make a change if, if we, if more, uh, you know, more uh, facts come out and more details come out, come out at, uh, on August 13th or August 3rd, I mean. Yeah, thank you so much. We do have uh, parents with that question, and I hope that um, we are now at 7.52. We would take the last question at 7.58. So let's go down the line. Uh, superintendent, try to answer as fast as you can. <laughs> okay, Ram, you're next. Are you there, Ram? Hi, uh yeah, okay. sorry. Uh, just uh, one follow-up question to my earlier question. I think uh, we were mentioned that uh, we need to go to the MUST side and uh, go to the superintendent tab and uh, post a question there because we were not getting all the updates. We didn't find a place where we could actually uh, type in something to kind of let you know. So should we send you an email or what is the best way to reach you? Uh, let me go ahead and take you, I'll show you. And in the meantime, while I'm getting there, uh, President Lian, if you want to ask, I will take the next question. Yes, Stephanie. Okay. I'm muted. Hi. Um, I was just wondering. I had a couple questions. Um, what if your kid doesn't work well with the teacher's learning style? Because I know at school it's a lot easier for them to understand. Like this child needs this certain way of learning, and this child needs that certain way of learning. I it, and it's going to be a little harder on. Um, during distance learning so is there a possibility of if that does happen changing to a different online teacher or we gonna no, play that? It's, i mean yes there are a lot of uh differences in the way learning and teaching is now but there are some things that are the same one is we need to be able to provide a staffing and assignments 
for teachers. And we also need to be able to provide the, um, the roster, just like when we had school in the old days. And also just like we had school in the old days, um, unless there is something really uh, extraordinary about the situation, we're on a case by case uh, basis, we would make um, some adjustments. We're Ms. not Jordan, doing a blanket overall like that. It's Stephanie Graves from Spangler and with the really dyslexic son. So that's kind of well, my. <laughs> you have an extraordinary situation yes. to talk to me about. Yes. Okay. Right. And then Thanks. my other thing would be really quick, which is kind of more of a question that doesn't really need to be answered right the second. But there are some of us parents that we are volunteers and we volunteer all the time, no matter what. So I guess it's more of a statement. If there is any volunteer situations where you need a parent to come in and make copies or whatever, I'm sure that we can find some to ease a little bit of the load off the teachers while social distancing, of course, from everyone. I appreciate yes. that. Uh, I appreciate one of the safety parameters is not having volunteers in the classroom, but looking for other ways that we could involve our parents who wanted to continue that connection of volunteerism without being in the classroom. So um, that is another idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And back. next up is Ankita. Uh, before we go to Ankita, I wanted to point out on the superintendent's page, here's what it looks like. You put your name in. If you represent an organization, you say what it is, but your parents, you're going to say no. So you can skip the organization address because that's not who you are. If you, um, you can give us your address because uh, you're a parent. Here you write your email and here is where you write your question. Uh, so, yeah, and how do you get to this page? Sorry, I submit it. Um, it is underneath. It's on the superintendent's page. So if you go to the home the landing page, the quick link is right here. Oh, oh, at the bottom. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, and Kita. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking the question. So um, we understood that um, there would be um, a group of six uh, kids uh, going to one day to school uh, and receiving the uh, in-person learning if uh, in hybrid model, uh, if chosen. So for rest of the four days, uh, Tuesday to the fri Friday, would, it, would the kid receive the learning from the same teacher or um, different teacher? Uh, the same teacher for now in the elementary level, the same teacher for the core subject areas and a teacher for science, if it's a student in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade, and then uh, working with a PE paraprofessional for students in first, second, and third. Okay, and I know um, you are kind of hashing out the details about the classroom model uh, training. Uh, so I would just put this uh, thought uh, into process that um, if we could have a, a classroom model based learning per subject, uh, so to say, and which you kind of alluded to, uh, that would be super great. So. Um, you know, kind of the school starts at 8 a.m. until uh, lunchtime. If we are covering, teacher is covering ELA and math, um, there's some type of schedule over there. And it's a classroom model um, where the uh, teacher gives the instructions for the new concepts. Yeah. May, may I interject? Thank you. May I interject? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Um, we're extremely appreciative of all the parents and the, uh, their participation tonight. The, the chat has been extremely active. Just to give you a quick reminder of what's going to happen is that we're going to review um, the session. We're going to review the items in chat. We're going to take all the information from the first session and the second session and build a, a structured frequently asked questions. Um, for everyone to be able to review. Um, just so that you're aware, Superintendent, could you share a little bit of the statistics that have been going on um, since we got out of school 
about our workforce committees and the number of folks that we've had involved in preparing for all of this so these parents can know that you know this isn't um, just on the fly kind of conversations. It's important that they know the amount of effort and work that's going on a continuous basis on their behalf. Yes. We have something called the NUSD Advisory Task Force, which is made up of uh, support team members, teacher team members, leaders, and that is um, about 37 people. And then we have 13 subcommittees, which cover areas such as grading, attendance, scheduling, safety, parent support, social emotional learning, special education, extracurriculars. And currently we have 200 people. And they meet anywhere from once a week to several times a week. So that's many, many hours which I'll have to figure out at the end because I'm sure it's going to be in the thousands of hours. Can I say something, Sharon, real quick? Yeah, please. And just, just for everyone out there that um, teachers are, do, are giving up their summertime to do this, they're not getting paid. Um, so just keep that in mind that we do really care about our kids and that we are here to make sure it's a smooth start to the school year for all of us because as we know we did crisis teaching for four three months um so i just want to shout out to the teachers of musd who have donated hours upon hours of their own time during summer to make sure that these plans are uh well thought out and will be executed in a, a great manner and because she didn't introduce herself uh diana orlando is our second grade teacher at pomeroy and also the president of our Milpitas Teachers Association. Thank you, Diana. Thanks, Tom. All right, we are going to take the last question from Nate and we will close out this session. Um, um, I, I, asked, I asked it on chat. So on the days that the kids are not there, are, on the off day, are they getting taught online with the teacher? Okay, so it's just every other day at school and then every other day in between at home with the, with the teacher. The same teacher though? Well, the same teacher will be providing uh, instruction. The teacher on Wednesdays will be doing prep time as well as collaboration with other teachers. And depending on what the teacher wants, uh, what the teacher feels is needed, may even be doing some one-on-one -on -one or small group with the students. And this goes back to um, making sure that we have those minimum minutes of instruction and learning time every day. So mm -hmm. it may also be that the teacher does a video recording ahead of mm -hmm. time that the students okay. have to um, log into. Okay. Yeah, with, with little ones like a, what, a first grader, it may be difficult to do some of the stuff online. I mean, is there going to be like workbooks and help with, with writing and... Yeah, we yeah. Have, we'll be using some textbooks and also some writing and art and other things that are not just a screen. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, that's... And then for... Um, my other question is like the, uh, the full-time mom who asks, who's, you know, the essential worker, I was just wondering, it sounds like most of this class is going to be still once in, in, in the mornings. Um, I just was wondering if they would be like a, an afternoon session instead as part of the hybrid, like some kids in the morning and the other half of the kids in the afternoon hours that would um, help so that they can get still like in person education. I was just wondering if that would be something that was thought of. Uh, the model that we are using with the the thinking behind having the afternoons is so that the teacher could pull in students one-on-one -on -one or in small groups or work with them in small groups virtually. Mm -hmm. Okay, for the afternoon if needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you once again for putting this together. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm. I know it takes time out of your day as well. Yeah, no, but it's important. I know you guys said this last question, but I literally sat to the last meeting and I sat to this meeting. I need, I just have a really important question. My son was overflowed from Senate to Burnett last year. Mm -hmm. um, we want to keep him there. He had really bad anxiety going from one school to the next. And I'm being told that we have to return to our homeschools this year. Why is that? 
Uh, Super Assistant Superintendent Rodriguez. Yes. Um, so we tried. It's and um, we tried to minimize uh, the overflows. Is not because we want to, but because we have to. Because we don't have enough space at the school sites, mm -hmm. and 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 we tried to send our our our. Our, our students back to their home school as much as possible. However, um, sometimes we have a window where the parents um, might request an open enrollment. And if it's one of our open schools, we can process that. Um, if you can't um, email me, I can talk to you over um, online to, if you can send me an email. Okay, um, I'm just, cause I know like I did file my paperwork. I just wonder if like oh, there's okay. gonna be an answer as to when, but I can email you as Norma. Ra no and Rodriguez at MUSD.org. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Oh, All right. I, I had a question. Okay, this is the, the really the last call that we're going to take. Um, it is past eight, so please go ahead. Are you there? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it's for me, right? Yes. Well, I have a question. Um, my daughter, she has a uh, hearing loss from one ear, and I'm just wondering if uh, kids that are, they have um, additional um, problem, trouble to learn, are they going to, we're going to get extra support on that? I think it sounds like you have a unique situation that I would prefer to learn more about what is going on with your child and so we can talk okay. with you offline. So if you would please either email my email my office at inquiries for the office of the superintendent or if you remember um, Ms. Rodriguez's email and Rodriguez at MUSD.org. M Rodriguez. And Rodriguez at MUSD.org. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Superintendent. Thank you, Assistant Superintendent Norma Rodriguez. I know Jonathan is here. Uh, all the admins, shout out to the teachers, um, parents, guardians, and students. Um, I apologize if we do not uh, spend a lot of time answering all the questions. Make sure you send in your questions. Um, Submit your questions before the meeting. That way you will guarantee an answer. And raise your hand as soon as you are locked into the next uh, meeting, which is July 21st, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, we will try very hard to take all the questions and answer all the questions. So... Uh. Can someone put in the chat the link to the form on the website where they can post their questions and we leave the chat open a little bit so so they folks can capture that uh cheryl would you do that i do want to recognize uh board member men no i'm not sure if other board members are on here if they are uh, that would be kelly and michael Sai. So thank you so, so much for the engagement. Um, we will have our next meeting July 24th, 8 p.m. And we're looking forward to seeing you all there. All right. Superintendent, is that the page that you wanted to show the parents? Um, I'm sorry, what did you say? Is that the page that Chris asked you to? Yes, I just put it in there, musd.org backslash superintendent's page. Okay. That's where they register at? Where they can ask that's questions. Their questions. Questions. That's where they, they can, that's right, that's where they can ask questions at. Thank you for that, I appreciate yes. that. Yes, they submit their questions here. Awesome. Again, thank you for uh, joining us tonight on Zoom. We will see you next Tuesday. I also want to say hello to Mary Jude. She disappeared.
<laughs> Mary Jude is our new director of student services and special ed, and she will be with us Saturday morning. We have another parent Q&A for our parents who have students in the special education program. All right. And thank you, thank you Diana, yeah. for joining us. I'd like to make an announcement as well. Uh, we do also have a parent, um, a town hall meeting for our parents of, um, who speak Spanish only, and that is on Friday um, to the 17th at 2.30. En español, uh, tenemos una junta también en es, uh, el viernes a las dos de la tarde, a las dos y media. Los esperamos. Gracias. All right, good night, everyone. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, leader. Thank you, uh, Mary Jude, for being here tonight. Cheryl, what time is this bed meeting? Someone's asking on Saturday. It's at 8.30. I mean, I'm going to see the website for chat today. I'm going to see Nine to ten thirty Saturday, July eighteenth. Thanks, Scott. Always the man with the answer. <laughs> I'm meeting people. Oh. Oh, I see that uh, board clerk Yep Shorn is here too. Cheryl, I had a question. It's Nicole Klein. Uh, uh, can you ask me offline, please? Yes, I will. Thank you. I'll shoot you a text. Okay. Good job, Cheryl. Good night. Good night. Hi, Mary. Thank you. Hi, Jonathan. Bye. Bye now. You're welcome, everybody. All right. Looks like we're done to the last few logging off. feeling good. Oh, she just logged off. I was going to say, I'm not leaving until you do, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs>